If you remember, Rashad Ritchie promised a whole bunch of kids in Maryland that he would graciously donate money to their PTSA to overcome money stolen by a low-down embezzling treasurer. I've been all over Rashad about this promise that he made since he made it. If you want to watch some of my older videos on the subject, check the links in the description. Well, I'm here to tell you that we can probably close the chapter on Rashad's tots. Hello out there. I am trying to get through. With cold, blunt analysis cradled in the warmth of reasoning, it's time for Johnny Walker Dread to straighten you out on a thing or two. Emanating all the way from exciting Las Vegas, Oklahoma, it's time for the Johnny Walker Dread Show. So let's go back in time. A school organization trustee stole $29,000 from the candy fundraiser. Put up the picture full of mass. Hell of a story. Very sad indeed. Okay, so Rashad now is going to turn his guns onto the candy company. Affiliate. Perhaps the lowest blow came with the bill itself. The PTSA could not afford to pay back the $6,000. $815 it owed to the world's finest chocolate company. That's the name of the company, the world's finest chocolate. The company that supplies the candy for such fundraisers. Schools typically pay a discounted price for the sweets once the fundraiser is complete and they keep the profits to benefit their schools. This is um, the spokesperson. So Ruth Whitney said she negotiated with the company and provided documentation of the theft. About half of the balance was forgiven, leaving a total of $3,407.50. So in other words, the candy company actually donated $3,400 towards the total debt. Remember that number, $3,400. Debt in collection, she said. Words find as chocolate spokesperson, Jennifer Taylor, who you see there, declined to comment on the outstanding invoices or whether the company had faced similar cases. Quote, we will always support our school partners and look forward to continuing to help schools fundraise, Taylor said in an email. Let's put up the CEO. That's old Ed. Eddie Opler, chairman and CEO of the world's finest chocolate. Look, looks like he have, he's having a good time um, on his boat. So the candy company forgave half the money it was owed. That didn't stop Rashad from criticizing the company for not being generous enough. He even showed the evil white company owner, here he is, having fun on his boat. But that's okay. Rashad is not the kind of guy who will stand aside and let such a social injustice occur. No, sir. He sprung into action and in the most visible way possible, promised to pay the balance of the PTSA's losses. Here he is. To the chocolate company, shame on you for not already stepping up to the plate and doing what you should have done. But if I'm sorry, but this is not the responsibility of the chocolate company. They didn't have to forgive any of it. As it stands, they're not making any profit on this deal. And yet, you chastise them for not stepping up. Oh, wait. It will not be shame on me. I will pay the balance, personally. However, the money seemed to be taking a long time to get into the hands of the PTSA, so we chastised the hell out of him for it. I even contacted the PTSA director to tell her about the promise weeks after Rashad made it, and she hadn't even heard about it. He had not even bothered to contact her. At some point, it became pretty clear that Rashad had no intention of keeping his promise. So I wrote him some more, and guess what? Rashad Ritchie finally came through. Well, not really. I received an email last week from one of my loyal followers who updated me on Rashad's tots. It reads, Johnny, I'm a social media follower of yours and I've taken an interest in the controversy surrounding Rashad Ritchie. The fake PhD Substack investigation surrounding his diploma mill degree is an outrage, and I'm amazed that his employer, associates, and followers continue to hold Rashad in high regard. If you're wondering what he's talking about, uh, you know that one of my guest hosts all the time is PhD investigator. He has his own Substack report on Rashad Ritchie, and I'll post a link in the description below. 
The man is a fraud, a drifter, a con man. Now keep in mind, I'm not saying this, this is what was said to me. I thought he may have had some ounce of dignity. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. When he claimed he would cover the entire cost of the $30,000 theft, I think it was $29,000. It appears the public pressure is mounting as he's donated, are you ready for this? $2,000. And expects everyone else to donate and cover the rest. So much for paying the balance. Given Rashad's self-publishing media blitz, glamorizing his accomplishment, I thought his shortfall of $28,000 on his $30,000 pledge would be something to address on your show. And that's exactly what I'm doing. I spent a lifetime helping kids earn their potential, and this latest act of deception pisses me off. Okay, now, by the way, I responded back by saying, how do you know that he paid $2,000? Well, I should have uh, clicked on the little three dots here because I didn't realize that he had received a response from Rosemary Ruth Whitney. And I'm gonna go ahead and name her because Rashad did in his video. Hi, Rashad Ritchie has so far donated $2,000. Is with your own personal laptop, which is rendered useless without batteries, and I have one for each of you. <laughs> He is also getting ready to spread the word regarding our GoFundMe page. Oh, 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 so he agrees to pay the balance. He gives you a measly 2000 and says, well, that's okay because I'm going to publicize your GoFundMe. <laughs> it sounds to me like Rashad Ritchie doesn't want to pony up the money, does it? We have also received 1675 through a PTA donation link I created. I hope this helps. The school would appreciate any donations from your midshipmen and staff members. Okay, so the original loss was $29,000. They got 9,000 of it back, that's 20,000. And they got about, let's say $1,500 back from somebody else. So you're still looking at $17,000 plus, and Rashad gave $2,000. He promised to pay the balance. The balance is over $17,000. He only paid two. I've made some empty promises in my life, but hands down, that was the most generous. From a PR standpoint, this is worse than stiffing the kids. At least when you stiff the kids, there's always the possibility that somehow I miscommunicated. Or perhaps something happened to my check. Or, or maybe the check is in the mail. But once he donated $2,000, all that goes out the window. He promised to pay the balance of what the culprit couldn't pay back, but only gave them a small fraction of the money. It's like peeling out of a parking lot in your hot rod and having the engine cough and sputter. Now everyone knows what you have under the hood. By the way, who in here believes that if it hadn't been for people like me hounding him, that the PTSA would have received a single dime? That's right. It took a grassroots uprising to pry any money from Rashad's clenched fist. Just to get a firm handle on the depths of his empty promise, here is Rashad crowing about his generosity on Twitter. It says... Stepping up doesn't require wealth, just heart. Uh, no, Rashad, it actually requires wealth if you're promising money. And it also requires commitment. But like the kamikaze pilot on his 15th mission, uh, you came up short in that area. Going back to the Twitter. The treasurer stole over $29,000 from the elementary school, eliminating their after-school programs. The multi-million dollar fundraising company did not forgive total debt. Like, why should they? They're not under any such obligation. And it says, here's the full article. And here's an article written in Business News Trend. Oh my gosh. This thing really made the news. Man steals $30,000 from school. 
Dr. Ritchie offers to pay balance. And you notice the odd headline. It says, Dr. Ritchie offers to pay the balance as if it's understood who Dr. Ritchie actually is. Gee, I wonder why this news outlet would assume that the reader would know that it's talking about Rashad Ritchie. Well, we go to Fake PhD Investigations, the substack I was telling you about earlier. And he has a special column on Rashad Ritchie. Now let's scroll down. So here are some websites that all have the same IP address. These are all news magazines, New York Inquisitor, Science News Watch. We've talked about that one before. American News Now. Look, all have the same IP address. And guess what? Right there to your right, Rashad Ritchie. He owns all of these magazines. And of course, they're not real magazines. They just stream in various news and allows him opportunities to write articles about himself and then publish them. And you'll notice down at the bottom, businessnewstrend.com. Read it, businessnewstrend.com. If you're curious about what the article says, well, guess what? You're out of luck. It no longer exists probably took on too much heat. So let me explain how disgusting this really is. He makes a phony promise, then gushes about it in his own online newspaper, making it appear as if somebody else was writing about him. Then he tweets the headline as if it's from an independent source. What kind of person does that? Hey, that's more like, you know, zany or, or goofy. Yeah. It's the wrong kind of loco. <laughs> well, all this raises the question, does Rashad Ritchie have any money? I mean, if I was rich and I had promised this money to a bunch of kids and my reputation was on the line, I would just go ahead and donate it. It's a tax write-off and a personal lesson on not shooting your mouth off to gain social acceptance. What's Ritchie's excuse? So... All he could do was scrape up $2,000. That's it. No wonder Rashad is now begging for money on his show. The watch that he loves to thrust in your face is probably a Rolex or a Rolex bought off a street vendor. Okay, we can all agree that Rashad reneged on his promise to the kids, a promise only made for publicity purposes. But we have another issue to discuss here and one that doesn't paint a very good picture of Kyle Rittenhouse. This is a GoFundMe set up by Faith Rittenhouse, his older sister, and it sounds like times have turned desperate for them. This is Faith in the picture, by the way. And yes, she's in the hospital. And the headline is, Support Faith's family in their time of need. Dear friends, family, and generous strangers. I'm reaching out to you today with a heavy heart and a sense of urgency that I have never thought I'd experience. Our family has been through unimaginable hardships, and now we find ourselves on the brink of losing everything. Just under four years ago, our lives were shattered when my brother was involved in a tragic shooting incident. The aftermath of this event uprooted our family's stability and left us grappling with grief, trauma, and the harsh reality of starting over. We know that we are not the only family struggling to rebuild after that fateful night. In the wake of this tragedy, my family, among many other families, has faced countless challenges. We've had difficulty obtaining and maintaining employment due to the fact that many people still believe my mother drove Kyle or was somehow involved in his decision to go to Kenosha. Hey, all you Kyle fans out there, you see these posts all the time about Kyle's mom drove him to the protest. Kyle's mom gave him the gun. It causes real harm. Moving on. We have struggled emotionally, mentally, and financially to piece our lives back together. With my brother's unwillingness to provide support or contribute to our family, we have been left to navigate this journey on our own. To make matters worse, I lost my job due to frequent hospitalizations. I have been unable to work over the last four months, making it extremely difficult to provide. 
Despite our best efforts to rebuild and move forward, we've hit another devastating roadblock. We have fallen behind on rent, and now we're facing eviction with only eight days left in our apartment. Eight days, guys. This is important. The thought of losing our home, our sanctuary in the midst of chaos, is overwhelming and terrifying, and I can totally understand that. We've exhausted every resource available to us, but we're still coming up short. The reality is that we have nowhere else to turn, and time is running out. We're pleading for your help, your generosity, and your compassion to see us through this crisis. Guys, if you can donate any money at all, 10 bucks, 15 bucks, 20 bucks, 25, anything you can donate, that will help, okay? I am going to donate, I'm gonna post up $133. So when you see 133, you'll know it's from me. And I'm urging you to come out and, and give them something. Try to help them out. In even a small amount, it all adds up. Your donation, no matter how small, will go directly towards preventing our eviction and ensuring that my family has a roof over our heads. Whether it's covering rent, utilities, or even helping us find temporary housing, your support will make an immeasurable difference in our lives. Keep in mind, um, Kyle is running around making all these public appearances. He's living it up. He's having a great time. And his family is facing eviction. So help him out. But beyond financial assistance, we're also asking for your kindness and empathy. Please share our story, spread the word about our campaign and help us reach as many compassionate souls as possible. Hey, you followers of mine on Twitter, would it kill you to repost my video so that others can see it? This has been a real pet peeve of mine, okay? Um, I put out these videos, I put a lot of work into them, and nobody shares them. That's one of the reasons why I only have about a thousand subscribers after three years. So come on. I mean, if you're going to share anything, share this one. This will do good. And maybe when you share it, there might be somebody on the other end that might say, hey, I can help and give out some really good money. So do it. From the depths of our hearts, we thank you for taking the time to read this. Your generosity will help us survive this crisis. Okay, I'm going to donate 133 bucks. Um, I can't really donate much more than that without old wifey poo getting all over my ass. So you have to understand I have to swim in the ocean with the other fishes. So see if you can help them out and like my video, subscribe to my channel.